children we are learning the lesson the sound machine we reached there in page number 110 we will continue that today here Klausner was waiting for the doctor and um, as he reached there he could hear the click of the front gate latch and he jumped and uh, coming out to see the doctor and he could see him coming with a bag in his hand well the doctor said well what is all the trouble so the doctor asked what is your trouble why did he call me i have come so klausner is calling him come with me doctor i want you to hear it i called you because you are the only one i have told it's over the road in the park will you come now so he is um, requesting the doctor to come along with him to the park where he has heard the shrieking and very horrible and louder noise of the tree trunk while he was um, cutting it with axe. So that's what he wanted to tell the doctor and want the doctor to listen it because he was the only one who knew about his machine and uh, Klausner also told about the machine to him and explained about the liking of him already he said that I like sound and because of the obsession of the liking after mad after that he was um, wanting to know that what all the sound um, the plants can produce and he wants to hear it though it is um, not audible to our ears but he wants it to be converted by the help of the machine which he has invented so he wants uh, doctor to hear the same sound which he heard so in this story we are um, taken to that part how what appeared to him is entirely different from the reality so he the sound um, which he liked made him to be after that and he it appeared to him that every nature produces sound and uh, it also has the feeling like human so here he wants to wants the proof with a witness someone to witness it so he is get, getting the help of the doctor page number 111 and he is wanting doctor to come with him to the park where he heard the sound he also wants him to listen it the doctor looked at him he seemed calmer now there was no sign of madness or hysteria he was merely disturbed and excited so doctor could understand the present condition of Klausner he is not of uh, any kind of uh, abnormal behavior he is very calm very quiet but he is more excited so he can doctor can, could understand his excitement so he is uh, walking with him they went across the road into the park and Klausner led the way to the great beech tree at the foot of which stood the long black coffin box of the machine and the axe where he has kept the machine and where he has kept left the axe which he used to cut the trunk of the tree he went both of them went near that why did you bring it out here said the doctor so doctor questioned him that why you brought this machine out to the park i wanted a tree there aren't any big trees in the garden and um, Klausner explained to him because in my garden there is no such big trees so I wanted to check with the tree because he has already checked with the branches uh, that uh, rose plant which produced the shrieking sound when uh, Mr. Saunders were, was pl plucking the roses immediately he checked it with the white lilies white daisies there which was on the lawn he also plucked the white daisies and checked it now he wants to hear the uh, 
uh, sound which will be produced by the big tree. So he didn't have much uh, such a big tree in his garden. So he has come to the park. And uh, the doctor asked him, and why the axe? Why did you bring the axe over here? You will see in a moment. So he wants to, like a drama he is dramatizing everything. So you will understand it in a moment. But now please put on these earphones and listen. Listen carefully and tell me afterwards precisely what you hear. I want to make quite sure. So he is instructing the doctor what to do. Put on this earphone and listen carefully and I want you to explain to me or summarize what you have heard and it should be you should make it sure quite sure it should be the doctor smiled and took the earphones and put them over his ears so the doctor took the earphone and um, he put on it on his ears Klausner bent down flicked the switch on the panel of the machine then the picked up the axe and took his stance with his legs apart ready to swing so he is uh, getting ready to get the absor uh, observation so the first step what he did he went to the machine and uh, quickly he turned the knob and then uh, he spread his legs and he make his posture to swing the axe and cut the tree trunk for a moment he passed so for when he was ready to swing the axe he's just passed stopped why he was reminded of the horrible louder shriek of the tree when he cut it with the axe yesterday what did happen he was, can you hear anything? He said to the doctor. So while he was stopping, doctor asked him, why are you stopping? Did you hear anything? Can I, what? Can you hear anything? So he was questioning, can you hear anything? He's keeping he asking him. Just a humming noise. So he, he is wearing the earphone. So can you hear something? So he's saying, only I'm hearing the humming noise. Just a humming noise. Klausner stood there with the axe in his hands trying to bring himself to swing. But the thought of the noise that the tree would make made him pass again. So again he tried to hit the tree or cut the tree with the, with the axe. But again he stopped because of the sound which was ringing in his ears. What are you waiting for? The doctor again asked. Nothing. Klausner answered and then he lifted the axe and swung it at the tree. And as he swung, he thought he felt, he could swear he felt a moment of the ground on which he stood. So he could feel some uh, something. He thought he felt that sound, what he had. The, root of the tree is uh, shaking like that the movement of the um, the movement of the ground he could uh, feel uh, he felt a slight shifting of the earth beneath his feet as though the roots of the tree were moving underneath the soil but it was too late to check the blow on the axe blade struck the tree and wedged deep into the wood so before the uh, simultaneously it is happening under his feet he could feel the movement of the ground at the same time he swung the swung the axe and um, made a bridge on the uh, wood at at that moment high overhead the same moment simultaneously so at that moment high overhead above his head there was a cracking sound of wood splintering and the swishing sound of leaves brushing against other leaves and they both looked up and the doctor cried watch out run man quickly run so when he was cutting the wood and swinging the axe 
there came a cracking a splintering of the big branch from its joint so the doctor and uh, clausener could hear the cracking sound and they looked up just over their head and they could see that branch is falling and it is brushing the leaves below that and coming slowly down so the doctor rushed asked him to rush man quick quick the doctor had ripped off the earphone and was running away he removed the earphone and running away but clausner stood spellbound he was surprised to see spellbound no moment he was standing still staring up at the great branch the branch was 60 feet long at least such a long branch was falling down that was bending slowly downward breaking and cracking and splintering such a sound it splintered cracked and breaking down and it is thickest point from its thickest point where it joined the main trunk of the tree so it is cut from the main branch of the big tree the branch came crushing down and clausner let aside just in time so he could jump away from that place already the doctor moved from that place but clausner was keep looking and when it was uh, reaching the ground striking the people allow are the things below that branch before it striking the claw man the little man clausner he moved quickly he leapt away he jumped away from there it fell upon the machine and smashed it into pieces so luckily he could come away from that place but the coffin box like that machine which is kept on the bench wooden bench was crushed by the big 60 feet long branch and it crushed the machine and it broke into pieces great heavens shouted the doctor as he came running back that was a near one i thought it had got you so it was so close to you i thought you got hurt thank god you are saved clausner was staring at the tree his large head was leaning to one side and upon his smooth white face there was a tense horrified expression that clausner could not understand what happened so he was uh, horrified to hear that big and long branch falling and crushing the machine and he was standing with all expression slowly he walked up to the tree and gently he prayed the blade from loose from the trunk so he removed the blade from that did you hear it he said still he is having that madness after the sound and he was asking the doctor the did you hear it he said turning to the doctor his voice was barely audible did you hear it like that without sound badly audible it was not at all audible it is not at all louder the doctor was still out of breath from the running and the excitement yeah what he was uh, full of fear and because he ran from that uh, danger and the excitement he is uh, having short breath so uh, he was saying that what what here what in the earphone did you hear anything in the earphone did you hear anything when the axe struck the doctor began to rub the back of his neck and he was so well he said as a matter of fact he paused and frowned and bit his lower lip and he with an anger mood he said that no i'm not sure i couldn't be sure i don't suppose i had the earphone on for more than a second after the axe struck so he answered it in such a rapid way yes yes but what did you hear what did you hear uh, half a second you have it and what did you hear i don't know the doctor said i don't know what i heard probably the noise of the branch breaking so i heard something maybe that the sound of the 
cracking of the branch from its from the trunk of the tree he was speaking rapidly rather irritably he got irritated he got anger uh, showed his anger in a tone he changed the tone and he was irritated would it it sound like clausner leaned forward slightly staring hard at the doctor exactly what it sound like he is after that because what appeared to him he wants to be proved and um, he was keep questioning oh hell the doctor said i really don't know i was more interested in getting out of the way let's leave it so the doctor answered it in a rough way that oh hell leave it man and dr scott what did it sound like keep questioning keep questioning for god's sake my god please leave me how could i tell that with half the tree falling on me and having to run for my life how can i hear it man when i was in danger i was running for my life i was saving myself from the branch which was falling from high and such a long branch so i didn't hear i what can i hear the doctor certainly seemed nervous he was so upright clausner had sensed it now now clausner can understand that the doctor is in trouble and that means he is troubled because of that sound he stood quite still staring at the doctor and for fully half a minute he didn't speak half a minute he did speak any word he kept quiet the doctor moved his feet shrugged his shoulders and half turned to go so he just uh, uh, shrugged his shoulder and he just wanted to move well he said we would better get back he didn't want to be there for more look said the little man and now his smooth white face became suddenly suffused with color and he was uh, full of color now look he said you sit this rub his face become red and um, he wanted the doctor to stitch the wound which is caused due to the cut or uh, because of the um he hit it with the with the axe so the wound which is made on the trunk to be stitched and like a cut on a human body we will deep cut if it is there the doctors will stitch the cut so that it can join so he wants the doctor to stitch the wound and um, he said that you he pointed to the last gash that the axe had made in the tree trunk you stitch this up quickly so he is uh, commanding the doctor quickly you will stitch it up don't be silly said the doctor don't be foolish don't be silly and you do as i say stitch it up so here clausner's concern towards the um living things especially that uh, trees the other living things so he was so concerned he treated the plant also equally as human so he had an apathy and uh, well, not only he sympathized he wanted something to do with that he wanted to have the pain in him he could uh, uh, feel the pain of that tree so he wanted the tree to be treated properly so he was um, after him i want you to stitch it quickly and you do as i say stitch it up gloves now was gripping the axe handle and he spoke softly he was gripping that why i did do i did uh, hurt the tree and he was so painful and gripping the axe and he was so softly speaking to the doctor in a curious almost a threatening tone so if you don't uh, do it it will be like that he was threatening the doctor i want you to do it like that don't be silly the doctor said i can't stitch through wood so don't be foolish man and i cannot do this how can i do uh, how can i do uh, stitch the tree it is not possible for me i cannot do it come on let's go back so he is keep calling him to go back so you can't stitch through wood no of course not so i cannot yes i cannot stitch through wood have you got any iodine in your bag so alternative treatment he is thinking of 
again it is showing the concern of um, Klaus now towards this. Though he was mad after the sound, now concern towards the plants. And uh, what did I have? What if I have? Yes, if I have iodine in my bag, what it is for? So then paint the cut with iodine. So he is um, telling the doctor to apply iodine on the wound. Iodine is a medicine which we put on the wound to heal it. It is a tincture. And I'll sting. It will sting, but that can't be helped. So the um, wound which is... Um, made on the trunk may have a bop, uh, like swelling like that it will be there but uh, we can't help it at least it will be healed now look the doctor said and again he turned as if to go let's not be ridiculous so doctor is um, look let's go let us not be foolish like let us let us not act foolishly like this let's get back to the house and then so let's go then we'll think of it paint the cat with iodine so again he is um, insisting the doctor to apply iodine on that wound the doctor hesitated doctor he knows he treats the human how he will do this and it is not logic there is no logic in doing it so he won't, doesn't want he was hesitating to do it he saw Klausner's hands tightening on the handle of the axe. So he is holding that uh, handle of the axe and he was um, feeling bad for uh, uh, hurting that. He decided that his only alternative was to run away fast and he certainly wasn't going to do that. All right, he said, I'll paint it with red. So no other go. He can run away from that, but he is not going to do because he is an elderly person and he honors him, he respects him. So they had a good um, term and he doesn't want to break it. So certainly he cannot run away leaving that man in that condition, he cannot run away. So he also has that concern towards that human. So all right, he said, I'll paint it with iodine. So he came down and he said, okay man, I will do it. He got his ba black bag which was lying on the grass about 10 yards away. So he went to the bag and uh, opened it and took out a bottle of iodine and some cotton wool. So he picked up the bottle of iodine and cotton. He take out, took out the cotton and uh, like um, applying on the wound he was applying. He went up to the tree trunk, uncorked the bottle, tipped some of the iodine onto the cotton wool. So he did as if he is treating a patient who has come with a deep wound and bent down and began to dab it into the cut. So he just put it in the cut and likely nicely he dab, uh, dab it and um, apply it nicely on the wound. And then he kept on uh, uh, one eye on Klausner. One side he is looking at Klausner. What is his reaction? Who was standing motionless with the axe in his hands watching him. Make sure you get it right in. So he is keep watching him how much is. So he is wanting him to put more and more so that it can go deeper and heal the wound. Yes, the doctor said. So he was uh, doing it like that. Now do the other one, the one just above it. So yesterday also he made a wound to that. So put it on that also. The doctor did as he was told. So he just listened what the man said. There you are, he said. It is done. So here I have done it. He straightened up and surveyed his work in a very serious manner. That should no, do nicely. So he was there and he did. Checked it. Klausner came closer and gravely examined the two wounds. So he came down near to the tree. The doctor did very well, but he wanted to examine it, check it. And he came closer to that tree and checked the wound. Yes, he said, nodding his huge head slowly up and down. Yes, that will do nicely. Yes, you have done so well. And this will treat this wound and it, it will do nicely. So the wound will be all right. He stepped back a pace. You will come and look at them again tomorrow. Not only he made the doctor to do it today. He wants him to come again to have 
treat the tree more and more. So tomorrow also you will come and put the iodine in that, apply the iodine. And so that you will see to that the wound is healing or not. Oh yes, the doctor said, of course I'll do it. And put some more iodine on. So tomorrow also you'll come and put some iodine. If necessary, yes. Then if it is needed, I will do it. Yes, I will do it. Thank you, doctor. Klausner said. And he nodded his head again and he dropped the axe and all at once he smiled. So he was so happy. A wild, excited smile and quickly the doctor went over to him and gently he took him by the arm and he said. So he had a wild and also that excitement with that wild excitement smile he could. So the doctor went to him and took on his hand and hand in hand like put his arm arm in arm that they were holding the hands and walking come on we must go now and suddenly they were walking away and the two of them walking silently rather hurriedly across the park over the road back to the house so they came back to their house so here the other has explained or expressed his thought by using the third person like a narration and um, it's all about if you come to the theme of the story appearance versus reality what I have observed is all three stories what you are having for this second semester some or other way it proves the theme that appearance versus reality. This is the present condition of the world. And people are after that, what appears to them. But in reality, it's not. So here that man, what appears to him, what he feels, he is often that, like a madman. But at the end, he could not prove it. And he has come to know that what he observed and it will be different perception of reality and others can perceive it in a different way. So reality depends on individual. So you cannot, you know, every person sees it according to his own thinking. Though it appears to them it won't be in real. So appearance versus reality. So it appeared to him that it is it's that plants produces sound. It also has nervous system. It also has that pain. It also feels that that appears appearance versus reality. In reality, he could not prove it. And another theme also you can come to know that concern for nature so in a some or other way the author wants us to understand one should have concern towards nature it should not be in excess but everyone should have a concern to the nature how the author has left it as open to interpret who it is called uh, open to uh, multiple inter, inter, uh, interpretation. Anyway, you can interpret the theme. So it is a story ends with the ambiguous note. Ambiguous note means open to multiple interpretation. So themes, many themes you can. So two themes. I have um, put before you, you can go through the story and you can bring